What antidote do nudibranchia have in order to feed off the coral and most toxic sponges? Is it possible that animals are familiar with the pharmaceutical powers of certain substances? Macaws ingest kaolin after eating poisonous berries, the same way that we take antacids for indigestion. Chemical substances structure and mark the guidelines of some of the most incredible behavioral patterns of living beings. When medicine and pharmacology began, they took advantage of essential substances extracted from plants in order to elaborate potions and treatments. Now, new active principles are even extracted from some animals. Cobra poison derivatives are being studied in order to fight against mad cow disease. In this episode, we're going to travel through a world overflowing with poisonous animals, immune species, and hallucinatory and hallucinogenic substances. The chemical war has begun. Toxins and poisons hidden in the most intimate cellular composition are the secret weapons that give a competitive advantage, which is also invisible, to its proprietor. For example, anything can hide under tropical soils. For many species, coming out onto the surface is a risk that should only be taken when it is strictly necessary. Many poisonous animals roam in this very special habitat. And here we have discovered an incredible way of using toxins. Tarantulas are feared because of their painful bite. They use it to hunt. But this tarantula is not looking for food. It's a male looking for a female. Maybe that's why the rodent has nothing to fear. And yet, he's too curious, and curiosity leads to trouble. This beautiful spider has developed an effective dissuasive system to repel an attack when it's hit from behind. It's a clever system that prevents having to kill, or even worse, waste poison. The urticarious hairs that project when he rubs his abdomen teach a hot lesson to the daring animal that will pay for his boldness in a terrible way. But the first substances that worked as poison were waste materials from bacteria. Our intense relationship with these microorganisms has sometimes been tragic. They're responsible for the most deaths in the history of humanity. This is Clostridium botulinum, the bacteria that causes botulism. They're the producers of the most deadly toxin that exists. One gram of its poison is enough to kill 10,000 people. Like them, many other living beings, in their attempt to proliferate, have designed and made their own chemical arsenal. Our fight against them is spying, more delicately known as microbiology. Up until a few years ago, we didn't even know the importance of fire or soap in order to fight against them. Today, we control them to the point of using botulin bacteria as a muscular relaxant in therapeutic programs. It's even used in anti-aging creams. Many antibiotics, saline solutions, and vaccines invented by man are nothing more than imitations of what other living beings naturally produce. For example, many fungi generate natural antibiotics to prevent their surroundings from proliferating bacteria. The most renowned kind forms part of the penicillium genus. We consider penicillin to be a technological product, and although it's so important to us, it's nothing more than the defense mechanism that fungi secrete to prevent bacteria from eating their food. Toxins were originally created with all probability to protect against the voracity of predators. And so it's logical that static forms of life, and especially those of the plant kingdom, 
the base of the entire food chain, are the best pharmaceutical experts on the planet. Their immobility is practical, but needs to be compensated for in certain ways. Plants have fabricated alkaloids, tannins, phenols, terpenes, and saponins, everything to limit the number of species that can devour them. Although they may appear to be defenseless, they aren't. The guapinol is a tree that has developed a specific poisonous toxin for the fungus that leafcutter ants feed on. Protection is evident. If this colony of ants decided to collect the leaves of this tree, they would only manage to kill the fungus, lose their harvest, and die of hunger. Howling monkeys seem to be perfectly familiar with the poisonous secrets that are hidden in the leaves of trees. An area was delimited for a field study. There were 1,699 trees, 149 of them belonging to the blackwood species. Man gets a strong but natural rat killer from its leaves. However, it was observed that the monkeys fed on three of these dangerous trees, but only these three. When these leaves were analyzed, it was proven that they were free of alkaloids and cardiac glycoside that caused toxicity. Once again, an animal has been able to dodge plant toxins. Undoubtedly, this knowledge would have represented a high price in the lives of young hunting monkeys. Through these behavioral patterns, however, we've been able to witness one of the most important factors in the development of primate intelligence. Great memory capacity is needed, as well as a highly developed language, in order to distinguish which plants can be consumed and when. Who knows, maybe this is something else that primates should thank poison for. Of these and many other forms, the phytophagous insects, or plant eaters, have had to adapt their customs and digestive systems in order to feed. Plants followed the saying, if you can't beat them, join them. They opted to associate themselves with some of their predators, and in exchange for food, they obtained new possibilities of dispersion. However, some animal species knew how to gain even more. They learned how to incorporate plant chemical compounds in their organisms. Now they're dangerous too. No one will eat this helicon until it changes its diet. 